go ahead and, and get things kicked off. We are here to talk about how to go from average to awesome in coaching your sales and CS team and to top performers. So we know becoming a great manager is a journey. It's not a destination. The path is full of shifts in mindsets and habits. And today we're gonna to talk about how to boost your team's performance and really scale a culture of learning through coaching. You'll be hearing a lot from me today as I lead you through some of our, our deck here, as well as our Master of Ceremonies, Mark, who will also be helping to answer all of your great questions in the chat. And then Luis has joined us for uh, an exceptional uh, piece of insight uh, from his experience as a manager, as a head of sales, and, and really as a coach uh, throughout his, his uh, experience in the field. So going to get some great tips and tricks from him as well. So here's what we're going to discuss over the next few moments together. First and foremost, who cares about coaching? What is the data behind the impact and why does it matter? Then we'll talk a little bit about the continuous culture of coaching, so how you can make this more regimented and, and, and implemented as part of your team structure. We'll go through the new way of thinking, so some of the coaching habits that may have become a bit stale and antiquated and some of the new strategies that you can replace those with to really see value. And we'll give you some key takeaways that you can implement today and really start to see an impact in your own skills and on your team. We know a lot has changed over the last few years. The meaning of remote work has evolved. Connections are being made differently. The ideas and information that we all share is happening in a much different way. And something else that's changed is coaching. We're talking about new strategies, new technology, new data. Being a good manager really is more than just supervising and overseeing your team. It's about being a coach, an advisor, and a leader for everyone that you represent. And it's really no longer optional. It's now a required skill that has a huge impact on so many different things, including retention, revenue growth, quota attainment, deal size and, and cycle length, and retention and satisfaction for both your customers and your team. But don't just take my word for it. Luckily, Avoma has analyzed millions of calls and hundreds of teams. Uh, we've worked alongside to, to gather real data about the impact of coaching here. And we see it across increased win rates with teams with consistent coaching programs. We see improved virtual communication skills, improved relationships between interpersonal team members, of course, revenue growth goals being exceeded and, and sales goals being hit. And overall performance and ROI really skyrocketing. Of course, virtual collaboration is also something that gets uh, impacted through coaching and is so, so important nowadays. Just think about your team. If you mentally break down your team into to three tiers or three groups, you know, you have a lot of folks who fall into that middle pack where they could really use some additional support and service. And you also have a group of top performers who are looking to move up into that next level. Coaching can help you analyze where you can apply your resources and your skills to be most effective and really moving those folks who are ready to accelerate to the next level. Imagine being able to take your B team and move them all into A players and then take all your superstars and just propel them even further. But I wanna know from you all, and we'd love some participation here, how, well is, uh, how often is coaching actually scheduled in your current process? So we'll do a quick poll here and you can be honest. You can answer in the poll. Maybe it's never, maybe it's occasional, maybe it's a monthly or, or weekly process, or maybe it's quarterly as part of a review. So if you could go ahead and throw in what your regular coaching cadence is now, that'd be, that'd be great. This is totally a judgment free zone here. Yeah, some good feedback is coming in. We'll give it just a few more seconds and then we'll uh, end the poll here. But interesting, it's a it's a very spread out mix. Uh, so looks like some, yeah, hasn't been worked in yet, but uh, a lot is more on the occasional side. Oh, now, now it's changing. So it's almost a neck and neck. Uh, I will end it. End of a couple more seconds here, and we will end. And I'll share this up on the screen, Sarah. So it looks like the winner. Actually, it's it's a very very close split. Okay. It's uh, split between occasionally and and weekly, uh, which is great to see some weeklies out there. 
There is some weekly structure. I love to see that. And as I mentioned, there's no wrong answer. So for folks who don't have a, a structure in place yet, or, or maybe a little bit more sporadic, that's okay. We're, we're going to talk about some tactics that you can really start from wherever you're at and continue to build on. Um, but thanks for the participation. That's great, everyone. As you all know, coaching needs to be ingrained into your workflow. That's why we're all here today. So let's learn why. It drives a culture of learning starting at onboarding. So the very first moment that your team is brought on board, you need to get that person ramped up and running fast through timely feedback and thorough guidance so that they can really start adding value as a member of the team. The old way of coaching and managing felt like monitoring over everyone's shoulders, really scheduling shadow blocks to try to connect folks. And it ended up costing you in the form of missing crucial data, hours of synchronous training time, siloed knowledge, and really bandwidth that you don't, you can't afford to lose at this point. And it's not scalable for the remote landscape and, and the global growth that we're all looking for. So instead of repeating the basics, we're going to talk today about some of the ways you can share foundational information asynchronously, and then really dial in your time to share your expertise. Right out of the gate, you can reduce ramp time by half with effective feedback and coaching. But the number one mistake we see is that teams stop at onboarding. There's going to be new launches, new requirements, new updates, and, and industry changes that you need to keep your team abreast of. So let's take a look at a new way of coaching to instill that continuous culture of learning. Type yes if you're ready to, to learn. Type yes if you're ready to, to get uh, chatting with us. First and foremost, we want to have you watch the game tape. Many of you probably played sports or, or have kids that played sports. Think of how many hours athletes spend practicing their skills, watching the process, re-watching and reflecting on their areas of weakness or even skills to lean into. But how is that process of call review part of your team culture? We just took a, a quick poll and saw it is structured in, in some folks, but are you instilling this culture of call review as a, as a really regimented part of your process, or is it more sporadic? Is it part of your actual performance goals where we're tracking these metrics as part of our KPIs? How are you pushing your team and what could you be missing by, by not? Instead, we recommend really setting a, a coaching cadence like weekly team calls. For instance, on our team, we use Feedback Fridays, but setting a standard across the team where those blocks of regular group coaching can happen and create fast, continuous feedback loops. It's also really important to set clear goals for your team so they have a framework to follow and clear expectations. One suggestion is to have self-evaluations for two calls a week. Um, that allows folks to go in and just take a look at their own game tape. Maybe leave a comment or, or a snippet for something that went well or something that they need help on but create that expectation that you want folks to go back in and watch the tape. This lets your team learn faster instead of spending hours synchronously trying to get together. You can coach on your clock while still arming everyone with the knowledge that they need. Now, Luis, I know we chatted about this uh, quite extensively. Talk to me a little bit about how your team watches calls back and, and how you go through that review process on your team. Uh, absolutely, thanks, Sarah. So. What, what a presentation, seriously, from the graphics to uh, the quick tips, all in 10 minutes of amazing content there. So thank you for putting this together for us. And what, you know, we've evolved so much uh, in the last five years in terms of coaching. And, you know, when we, uh, we used to try to do this without a sales intelligence software and it, it took forever. So what we're doing now is we we have our weekly call reviews sure but we have daily role play sessions where our team is self-coaching so that's the real goal that we wanted to implement from coaching is how do we get our reps to self-analyze and self-coach because you know, no matter what we have here we're not going to be able to watch every single call you know we have over 200 demos a month just from the inbound team another 100 from outbound and you know so how do you get reps to coach themselves and you know, through our regularly scheduled feedback sessions uh, where we, you know, pull up a specific part in a VOMA, uh, we'll figure out what we need to work on. And then we'll have daily role-playing sessions where the reps work on what they need to work on. Uh, and then they grade themselves at the end of the day. 
and they submit at least one scorecard. So everybody's watching one demo back uh, and you know either reviewing a peer or reviewing themselves that day. So that's taken years to implement though. And it's, you know, it's really getting their buy-in. And I, I saw that question that we're gonna answer live. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Mark, do you want to pause and answer that right now? It looks like you're... Yeah, no, I, that, that works out perfect because there was a, a really good question that came in um, and, and Luis would be good to hear your perspective on it uh, because it really feeds right in line with what you were just saying and talking about uh, self-coaching. But the question was, you know, when it comes to coaching, what are the suggestions for getting buy-in from reps that say they don't need coaching? Because there's always going to be people like that. And I'm sure, you know, in, in your career, like you said, you've been working on this for five years. I've been fortunate enough to, to, to have worked with Luis as I've been here for about the last year, probably year and a half. And I've really seen some of the things that he's done, even seeing the culture, like there's a, such a strong culture at Mailshake around growing and learning. You can see that from the posts that his team posts on, even on LinkedIn, right? So we'd love to get your thoughts on that. Like when you have a rep that says, oh, I'm, I got this. I don't need that additional help. How do you get their buy-in? Don't hire that rep. It, so it's the number one thing that we're looking for when hiring reps, right? We want to hire coachable reps that want to get better. Are you telling me your close rate can't be improved? Did you get a hundred percent close rate? Did you close a hundred percent of your deals? You know, are you, are, you know, are you listening back to your calls? You wouldn't have changed anything. You did a perfect call. It, it's impossible. Every, you know, even if you check off every item, there are things you would have changed or other questions you would have asked. So it, you know, it, it, and maybe it's not the right coach for that rep, right? Maybe it's, it, the rep doesn't need coaching, but they need us, you know, they, they, they haven't found the right fit to coach them. And we've, we've had that experience, right? We've hired external coaches as well. So it's not just me coaching the team. Uh, it, you know, now there's peer review. We hire external coaches with a ton of expertise, right? But, a, you know, a way to get buy-in is, and, and this pro tip, uh, I'll plan on sharing later, but I'll, you know, I'll share right now. It's have them create the structure, have them create their scorecard on what needs to be in, the, in an effective demo, like what they need to do in discovery for it to be a great discovery. What questions do they need to ask specific to your, you know, your, your product, uh, in the demo. What do they need to ask to, you know, what do they need to show? What specific features did they find out in discovery that they need to show in this demo to give a world-class demo? Are they showing too much? Are they showing too little, right? Uh, you know, so have them figure out that flow. And then the closing as well. What do they need to do to have an effective closing? Are they setting up next steps every time? Are they getting that calendar accepted, that calendar invite accepted in the call before? Are they asking for the deal? You know, these are all measurable things that, you know, really you can't argue it. So it's, it's a measurable process. If you're able to look at it, you know, you can, you can apply science to it and you can watch the close rates improve, you know? So when reps start at Mailshake, they're closing at, you know, 10% within month three, our goal is to get them over 30. You know, the reps that have been with us over a year, our goal is to get them over 40. And it, uh, it consistently keeps happening, right? We, you know, so uh, I, I mean, I can go another 15 minutes on, on this, but your reps need to get coached. <laughs> if, if, if they don't want to get coached, you probably don't have the right rep. I love it. I love it. And, and one quick thing, I know we got to move on, Sarah, but one thing just to expand on, yeah, I really like, Luis, how you said, uh, first you said, yeah, look for that in the hiring process because you're right. Like that coachability, that desire to learn is so key. Uh, but then just turn it back into that phrase, like you said, are you closing 100%? Can you do, you know, if you think about it, can you do anything better? Not even in the framework of your role exactly right now, but just I always think about it as a person, you know, like Sarah here has done a, a great job putting this together and she onboards some of our top customers, you know, and my goal for her is not to make, you know, her a little bit better in onboarding, but to be the most knowledgeable onboarding person in the world, um, and, and to be the most sought after person in her role, uh, again, not even for the benefit of the company, for the benefit of her. Like, you know, when you approach it from that angle, like a, a coach, a mentor, you want your people to continue to excel um, in their job that they have, of course, with you now. But then even beyond that, 
uh, right? And none of us are perfect and none of us will, will ever be perfect, uh, but we can always strive, you know, and there's always something that you can fix. And that hunger is just part of the culture that I think you can set as a leader um, and make sure that everybody is on, on board with that. Absolutely. This is all... I yeah, no, this is all great. And, and Luis, even just hearing, you know, the successes from your team, it's, it's so, so fantastic to just see the real world success and how you've been able to kind of replicate it. Uh, and part of that I know is through being able to pinpoint your efforts. So it's impossible for any manager to try to be everywhere at once. You have a lot on your plate and only so much bandwidth. As you mentioned, you can't listen to every call. I think you said something like 200 inbound calls a, a month and spreading yourself thin is ineffective. We all know that. And good coaching focuses both on identifying the issues and then going in and really providing solutions. So a lot of us tend to get stuck in not knowing where to start. We spend time trying to chase down what people we need to, to reach out to, information that we need. We spend valuable time looking for the calls and the reps that need our attention. And many of you may fall into the same trap. But instead, we'd love to suggest creating a playlist to help organize what actually needs your attention. For example, a playlist for objection handling where reps can add their snippets for feedback of objections that they're facing, maybe that they got stuck or weren't able to overcome so that you can go in and provide coaching and, and feedback for them to work that deal better in the next cycle. You can also instruct reps to add comments on specific issues or pain points that are raised. So without even adding into a playlist, they can quickly comment and, and collaborate together with their managers and with the team to say, here's what I'm looking for additional help on, or here's something that's been brought up and I want to coach myself on. As, as Louise mentioned, that self-reflection and that self-analysis is so important in the reps that are going to grow and, and be successful on your team. And then right in line with that, you're going to have things that change in your product. You're going to have new releases, new updates, and there's going to be new talk tracks that really work. You're going to have reps that are able to really nail it. So when you have top talk tracks, create that, that shareability and that collaboration through playlists and through snippets to really scale what is working on your team. That allows you to save your valuable time and pay attention to more of the anomalies that need your attention. So Luis, putting you back on the spot here, I know you talked to me a little bit about how you used to try to do this just with Zoom recordings and kind of go into a war, a war room type scenario where you'd review calls and look for particular areas to, to call out there. But talk to me about how you've tried to streamline this with, with some more directional data. Totally, yeah. I mean, in, in Zoom, you get the cloud recording, you click on it, you know, you, you try to review this call and we, we did that for a year and then we instilled this little you know, coaching culture but I didn't realize how much time I was really wasting until I was able to have it all organized in software. And that, you know, just the first five minutes of Zoom where they're trying to plug in audio, they're trying to figure out if the sound's working and what, whatnot, and then you, you know, you try to fast forward five minutes in, would have only just click right where the conversation starts with, you know, so that itself is worth every, everybody in just organizing uh organizing your calls but in terms of like picking areas and really pinpointing where you want to work on in the beginning 99 percent of reps need help with discovery right so if you're focusing on the whole demo and i used to make this mistake i used to go and we'd listen to the entire demo it's like no let's just focus on a discovery let's nail down discovery um when we launch new products we that is one of the hardest things for reps to do is incorporate, you know, imagine they've been here a year, they presented 500,000 demos. Now they have a new product to launch, right? About when we all launched the, the you know, scheduling feature. Now they have to incorporate this into their demo process. So what I notice is none of the reps were saying it. None of the reps were asking discovery questions related to it. Why? Because they were defaulting back to their original programming. You, you, you need to train and role play and, and incorporate this um, you know, like a, like an exercise regime. So having this allowed us, to, like what I do now is I quickly, and, uh, I learned this from one of our sales coaches, KD is like, go into your software and search for what the new product is. Ours was a done for you copywriting service. Yeah, so I would search copywriting done for you. 
uh, email campaign and I would pull it up and you know, I notice, hey, it doesn't look like we talked about it here, what happened? And, and after doing this for 50 times, it's now part of the script, right? So uh, what's doing that role playing, but you can pinpoint, right? Now we just launched a data product. Data is not getting talked about. So what do we type in? Data. All right, now we have, you know, what we, what we know we need to work on. So, um, and then the ones that do have it, you can push it into a playlist and encourage, you know, the other reps to go listen to it. Hey, listen to how Andy is doing this. Listen to uh, how, how Paula is selling data and, and done for you. And you, know, you can listen to these six successful calls. So that's been a real game changer for us. And, you know, really, again, like we just, figure this out now and I'm sure in six months we're going to have some better processes and, and things that we're doing but you know that's the beautiful thing about coaching yeah no I, I love that so much and and one of the things you just mentioned that I was just excited for that next slide there that you use the data you take the data that's happening in these conversations and you're actually utilizing it and leveraging it for the decisions that you're making on the team which I think is is so important for us to do as managers and as coaches for the team so like you said, looking in to see how they're talking about those new product releases, how they're ta phrasing those, those new talk tracks, but even more into asking what questions your top reps, reps are asking so that you can know what's, what's moving the needle for your customers. Looking into data on their talk times and their filler words, really identifying who needs your help and where you can kind of you know, attach your expertise. And some of you may have uh, reports and, and kind of dashboards that drive this now, but it might be taking a while to gather that insight and it might not be really uh, usable or, or, or easy to leverage. So what we recommend is to start diving deep, deeper into the reports, like Luis mentioned in conversational intelligence and tracking progress on things like keywords and topics that are really important for your team to cover as part of their process. You can get instant accountability to not only see what's working, but also see who needs a little bit more help. Three of the recommendations we have here, and I'll, I'll go through these a little bit more quickly because I know we only have a, a few moments left together, but we recommend identifying your reps who are monologuing. That coach, uh, excuse me, that talk to listen ratio is incredibly crucial for really impactful interactions and making sure that your reps are listening. Evaluate how they're selling those key topics or new products so that, as, as we talked about, you can go in and see exactly how they're being received and, and framed to your customers. And filler words is just a fun way to kind of see where your reps may be uh, adding or, or need a little bit more training in things like economy of language to just refine their skills. So I'm going to kind of breeze through this real world tip, Luis, just for the purpose of times, but I know that uh, you've dialed in and you even talked to some of these data points that you've really used. It's just so important to remember to, to take all of this great information that you all get out of your conversations and implement them into your team's goals and into your, your planning moving forward so that you can really drive the decisions there. I know we want to cover democratizing coaching and how to encourage reps to become more autonomous in their self-coaching and also get involved in peer coaching so that you can really scale the feedback that the team is getting and it doesn't all fall on your plate. Weaving that involvement into your team's structure is what's going to allow all of the, the value to go across different managers and different levels. So empowering all staff with coaching skills through coaching and review activities, as well as monthly and, and uh, weekly peer mentorship blocks is going to be hugely helpful to empower every single person on the team to get involved and feel that their feedback is valuable. That allows everyone to become a coach. It involves everyone to share their feedback. Um, and it really democratizes the, the input that the team is getting. It's also important to link this contribution or this peer evaluation back to your KPIs so that the team knows it's not just themselves that are that are being graded and evaluated, but their contribution to the team is also part of your culture. And that helps to promote that buy-in and promote that, that uh, evolution of learning. Now you touched on this a little earlier, but Luis, anything else to add about uh, how you kind of empowered the team to get themselves involved in self-coaching and even sort of what you mentioned about that, that self-scorecard and how they created their own evaluation? Get it on the calendar. You know, if it's on the calendar, yeah. it's done, schedule it, don't skip it, put it together. It's not going to be perfect. You can evolve it. Love it.
Love it. And then our last one here, folks, you've made it with me. We're, we're driving to the, the uh, home home field here. Um, it's to score objectively with AI. So right now, we've talked about how important scoring is, but how subjective is your current process? Are you able to provide really unbiased feedback? What kind of rubrics or, or scales are you using? And really, how clear is that to the team? The nice thing about using something like a scorecard is it creates that objectivity to evaluate more calls with less personal input. You can spend less time cherry picking what calls you want to evaluate, hoping to get a representative sample and really impartially identify what calls need to be scaled and praised and also kind of addressed for, for more, more coaching. Now, you all are some of the first to know um, that in addition to the clear rubrics that you can set in your more manual scorecards, uh, I'm going to flip ahead one more. We also have our brand new AI scorecards that are about to be released to the, the general population of Avoma users. And this is going to go through and remove the noise and score every single call for your team. So every single call is going to be addressed. Nothing is going to be overlooked. You're going to get consistent standardized feedback on all of your calls. And this is gonna allow you to then see, again, the anomalies on the scale of a little bit lower or a little bit higher for you to address and really make sure that you're uh, utilizing your time effectively and, and jumping in as that coach. So just to recap here, we talked about having our, our team build their own scorecards, let them tell us what goes into a, a good call and have the team more easily follow their own process and, and make it a continuing iteration. We know there's different stages of coaching. You can start anywhere. You may be new to implementing these scheduled blocks. This may be something that you that you have as part of your uh, cadence, but something that you want to refine and maybe tailor a bit more for your team. It's just important that you start doing it. Uh, Luis, I know you mentioned, uh, I'll kind of summarize for you if you don't mind here, but you all hired the best consultants. So you all, in addition to your own training, you looked outside of your own organization. You brought in some trainers to help build a structure from the ground up and really worked to, to track the measurable benefits on close rates, retention, and, and confidence, and continue to promote things like coaching trainings and sales competitions. Uh, so any last minute or, or final tips to help wrap us up that you would offer as, from your experience as a coach? If you have a budget for it, I know we're in a, a tough economy, y'all, but hire those external coaches, get your team motivated, maybe create a challenge for them. You know, if you hit this goal, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll go hire uh, more Asselini, Kevin Dorsey, what, what, one of these great coaches, uh, Luis sent. <laughs> um, really, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Mark, uh, for having me on here. It's been, it's been a blast sharing. If anybody wants to connect and, uh, on LinkedIn, happy to share any coaching tips and what I've learned doing, doing wrong and uh, hopefully some something that we've done right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Luis. And, and everyone, we want you to start coaching today. Incorporate these as a regular part of your structure. Achieve and scale your success. We're going to send this takeaway list home with each one of you today so that you can go in and start implementing these exact strategies on your team so that you can start measuring the new coaching cadence. And then we'd love to keep chatting. So we're going to put up a quick poll for anyone who would like to be included in our new AI scorecard beta and get the first peek, as well as anyone who'd like some more uh, speci speci specific one-on-one -on -one coaching follow-up. Um, so we can reach out to you and really make sure our CS team helps advise and, and follow up with all of the coaching best practices you're going to put into place. And as always, feel free to reach out to help at avoma.com anytime. We're always happy to help and listen. Thank you everyone so much. We're here for questions. We'll hang on the line for another, you know, five, five, 10 minutes or so. We welcome any questions in the chat, but thank you, Luis. Thank you, Mark. Thank you everyone for joining. And we hope this has been helpful to get you inspired to, to coach yourself and your team.